The encyclical letter of the Holy Father Francis on care for our common home. Chapter 3, The Human Roots of the Ecological Crisis. Chapter Introduction and Section 1, Technology, Creativity and Power. Translated by the Vatican, read by Frank Blissett. It would hardly be helpful to describe symptoms without acknowledging the human origins of the ecological crisis. A certain way of understanding human life and activity has gone awry, to the serious detriment of the world around us. Should we not pause and consider this? At this stage, I propose that we focus on the dominant technocratic paradigm and the place of human beings and of human action in the world. Section 1. Technology, Creativity, and Power Humanity has entered a new era in which our technical prowess has brought us to a crossroads. We are the beneficiaries of two centuries of enormous waves of change. Steam engines, railways, the telegraph, electricity, automobiles, aeroplanes, chemical industries, modern medicine, information technology, and, more recently, the digital revolution, robotics, biotechnologies, and nanotechnologies. It is right to rejoice in these advances and to be excited by the immense possibilities which they continue to open up before us. For science and technology are wonderful products of a God-given human creativity. The modification of nature for useful purposes has distinguished the human family from the beginning. Technology itself expresses the inner tension that impels man gradually to overcome material limitations. Technology has remedied countless evils which used to harm and limit human beings. How can we not feel gratitude and appreciation for this progress, especially in the fields of medicine, engineering, and communications? How could we not acknowledge the work of many scientists and engineers who have provided alternatives to make development sustainable? Technoscience, when well-directed, can produce important means of improving the quality of human life, from useful domestic appliances to great transportation systems, bridges, buildings, and public spaces. It can also produce art and enable men and women immersed in the world to leap into the world of beauty. Who can deny the beauty of an aircraft or a skyscraper? Valuable works of art and music now make use of new technologies. So, in the beauty intended by one who uses new technical instruments and in the contemplation of such beauty, a quantum leap occurs, resulting in a fulfillment which is uniquely human. Yet it must also be recognized that nuclear energy, biotechnology, information technology, knowledge of our DNA, and many other abilities which we have acquired have given us tremendous power. More precisely, they have given those with the knowledge, and especially the economic resources to use them, an impressive dominance over the whole of humanity and the entire world. Never has humanity had such power over itself, yet nothing ensures that it will be used wisely, particularly when we consider how it is currently being used. We need but think of the nuclear bombs dropped in the middle of the 20th century, or the array of technology which Nazism, Communism, and other totalitarian regimes have employed to kill millions of people, to say nothing of the increasingly deadly arsenal of weapons available for modern warfare. In whose hands does all this power lie, or will it eventually end up? It is extremely risky for a small part of humanity to have it. 
There is a tendency to believe that every increase in power means an increase in progress itself, an advance in security, usefulness, welfare, and vigor, an assimilation of new values into the stream of culture. As if reality, goodness, and truth automatically flow from technological and economic power as such. The fact is that contemporary man has not been trained to use power well. Because our immense technological development has not been accompanied by a development in human responsibility, values, and conscience. Each age tends to have only a meager awareness of its own limitations. It is possible that we do not grasp the gravity of the challenges now before us. The risk is growing day by day that man will not use his power as he should. In effect, power is never considered in terms of the responsibility of choice which is inherent in freedom. Since it's only norms are taken from alleged necessity, from either utility or security. But human beings are not completely autonomous. Our freedom fades when it is handed over to the blind forces of the unconscious, of immediate needs, of self-interest, and of violence. In this sense, we stand naked and exposed in the face of our ever-increasing power, lacking the wherewithal to control it. We have certain superficial mechanisms, but we cannot claim to have a sound ethics, a culture and spirituality genuinely capable of setting limits and teaching clear-minded self-restraint. That was the chapter introduction and section 1, Technology, Creativity, and Power, from chapter 3, The Human Roots of the Ecological Crisis, from the Encyclical Letter of the Holy Father Francis, On Care for Our Common Home, translated by the Vatican, read by Frank Blissett.